So a while back, I did a video on how to map network shares in Linux Mint. But what I did not show was actually creating that network, creating those shares, and then showing you how to actually share the files. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to create a home network in Linux Mint. So on the other side of the house, I have a computer called Media that stores all of my music, my videos, my movies, and things like that. So I want to be able to talk to that computer, and I want to talk back and forth. I want to be able to share folders on this computer that the, that, that computer can see and, and transfer from, and I want to be able to share folders and files on that computer that this one here can also see. So I want to be able to transfer back and forth. So the network we're going to set up today will allow us to do that so the first thing you want to do is make sure that both computers have linux mint cinnamon installed and that they're both updated now down here in the update manager you'll see that mine says uh, your system is up to date but if there are any uh, system operating system updates it won't show you'll have to click on this and then go to edit now if there's an upgrade to the system operating system uh, underneath where it says software sources, it will say upgrade to the most current version. So your update manager will say up to date, uh, even though there is a uh, an operating system update. But uh, anyway, just click on that. Check here. Uh, I'm running Linux Mint 22.2. And if you want to find out, just go here to system and go to system info. And you'll see that it says Linux Mint 22.2. So both this computer and my media computer in the other room are running the same operating system and they're both up to date. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna set static IPs. Basically what that means is that we want the network to define the IP address and to keep it. Usually what will happen is you'll have what's called DHCP and uh, the system will actually pick an IP uh, address for you when you boot up your computer, but it, it could change. And so what you want to do is you don't want this IP address to change. So we're going to set a static IP for both machines. And the way we do this is we go to our network connections. So you go here to the start menu and then go network. And in here, we're going to click on the little gear here and we're going to go to IPv4. And then in here, we're going to change this to manual and we're going to set the IP address here to 192.168.1 and let's make it 10. Subnet mask, we're going to make this 255.255.255.0. Now the gateway, we want the gateway to be our router's IP address. Now if you don't know your router's IP address, uh, you can install a little program called Angry IP. So let's go uh, Angry IP Scanner. And if you install this and then hit start, what it will do is it will scan all of the IP addresses on the machine. Now, um, I've disconnected uh, everything like my NAS and whatnot uh, just to uh, make life easier so we don't see a bunch of numbers up here. All the green ones here are the IP addresses that are used. 1.1, uh, 1.19, 1.9, 1.9, 1 1 1 I mean. I'm getting all messed up. And then you'll notice here media, the media one is 0.28. So that changes every time. That's the computer in the other room. So my, uh, my computer is this one here, 1 1.9. I don't want it to be 1.9. I'm going to set it manually. So my gateway is 1.1 right there. That's my router's IP. So it's 192.168.1.1. So that's my gateway. That's my uh, router's IP. And then I'm going to apply. So now I am still connected uh, as... Uh, dot nine so i'm going to go into my terminal and type sudo systemctl restart network manager it's going to ask for my password and now i should be connected to the um, ipv4 to check that i just go down here to network uh, connections click on network settings and right there ipv4 address 192.168.1.10 
Now I'm going to go to my media computer and I'm going to make it 192.168.1.11. Okay, so now that both computers uh, have static IPs, now we uh, are going to install Samba. So Samba lets uh, Linux Mint machines share files over the network. And so uh, we're going to go to uh, terminal here and we're going to go sudo apt update because we want to make sure that the computer is updated. Would help if I typed in the right password. And then we're going to sudo or sudo, however you want to pronounce it, install Samba. And now I already have it installed. Now I'm going to go to the media computer and make sure it's installed. And then we will continue on. Okay, so now in order for Samba to share files across the network, I need to add the users to the Samba database. So in, in other words, if I want uh, the media computer to access my files here, I need to add that user into the Samba database on my main machine. And then for my main machine to access the, the files on the media computer, I need to go to the media computer and add my user main from here to that one's database. So the way that we do that is we go to a terminal. So we're going to type in sudo, S-U-D-O, that's super user do, S-M-B, P-A-S-S-W-D, space, hyphen A, space, media. And now it's asking me for my local password. And now it's asking me for the Samba password for the media computer. So I'm just going to give it any password to be able to uh, access it. So the media computer has to type in this password the first time they log into this machine or try to access this files. So we're going to give it that password. And there we go. Now I've added the Samba user media. So what I'm telling the machine here, I'm telling Samba, hey, the media computer can access my files. And here's the password for it. So now I need to go to the media computer and set up this machine's account so that I can access its computers. So I type in sudo SMB PASSWD hyphen A THARP and then set up a user on that machine so I can access its files from this computer. So now to share files across the network, it's very simple. I've created this folder here, and in this folder, I threw in some of my pencil sketches here. Now, suppose I wanted to share this folder with the media computer. It's very simple. So I just right click on it, left click on properties, and then I go to share, and I click on share this folder. Now, you'll notice down here where it says the permissions for wrong number of arguments prevent other users from accessing the share. Now, this, um, it's my understanding that this is a Nemo uh, problem, and it doesn't seem to affect the sharing at all. Uh, it seems to only happen in Nemo, and I just completely ignore it. It's never been a problem. So if you're running Nemo, uh, just I ignore this issue. I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me, and they're going to say, no, it's, you know, and here's the problem to fix it. You know, here's the answer. But um, for me, I've uh, done multiple workarounds, and um, it's just, it's, I think it's just the way that Nemo is, and I completely ignore it. Now, others may have their own opinion, but um, yeah, it doesn't affect the share at all. Now, I can change the name of this, but I'm not going to. And right here where it says, allow others to create and delete files in this folder, you want to click that on and then create share. And now the share is created. Now, let's go to permissions. And what we want to do is where it says group, we want to change that to Samba share. Now, if you have a lot of folders and subfolders and files inside, uh, you might want to click and apply permission to enclose files and then uh, select close. And there we go. Now that has got the share emblem on it right there. So that folder right there is shared. So now let's go to the media computer and let's access this folder. OK, so I'm on the media computer now to access the shares from the media computer. All I have to do is go to computer, go down to left on the left here, network, and then main, because that's the name of the computer. And then this is all the, the list of all the shares that I have on that computer. So I double click on share this. 
and then I need to type in the credentials that I created in the Samba share, which is media, and then the password I created. And then click on remember forever and then connect. And then because I don't use a password to log into this computer, it's asking me for the default password, the key ring to log in. And there we go. And there are all of my shares. And now you'll notice after accessing that share, it creates an icon on the desktop. It mounts it. And this is at this point where I actually started the video on Gigolo showing you how to actually uh, mount those shares upon startup and then have them connect all the time. So I'll put a link in the description below to that video. And then that will complete the whole uh, accessing sharing files on a local network on Linux Mint. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And uh, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. We'll catch you later.